If you now look at Genesis 1.27, Genesis 1.27. Now, in Genesis 26, let us open our scriptures this morning. Quickly, let me read from my scripture here. Uh, Genesis 1.26, the Bible says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. Now, when God wanted to create man, God specified the purpose of man. He specified the reason he wanted to create man. And so he said, Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creep on the earth so that means one of the reasons that god created the earth, uh, the earth is that the man is that god wanted man to have dominion god wanted man to rule to reign here on earth and that is one major reason why god created man so in verse 27 look at what the bible says so god created man in his own image now i want to quickly clarify something towards here now this Bible, this place is saying God created, so God created man in his own image. Now man is a spirit. So God has started to exist with God from Genesis chapter 1. But we'll see later that in Genesis chapter 2, verse I think verse 7, the Bible now said, and God formed man from the dust of the earth. So man is a spirit being. Man has started to exist with God already from Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. But the man that God created there is the spirit man. Is the spirit man that God created in verse 2. We'll see an account of where God was, uh, the Bible was talking about, I think in verse 5, the Bible says that, and there are God caused, God will always send dews to water the surface of the earth. God had not sent rain at that time because there was not a man. The Bible does not contradict itself. There was not a man physically, there was not a man in person physically on earth but man has started to exist in spirit don't forget that the book of john chapter 4 verse 24 says that god is a spirit god is a spirit so in genesis chapter 1 verse 27 god created the man spirit the spirit man god created that man at that time now if you go if we move very fast to the book of genesis chapter 3 uh, i think from verse 9 you remember how um from the beginning of that chapter, how the devil came in the, in the form of the snake serpent and deceived the woman. And after he deceived the woman, the woman also deceived her husband. And they both fell from, you know, from, now they fell from something. Now, if you look at that account very well, I, I, I'm not going to be reading all the scriptures. I'm just going to be saying that we can jot down so that we check them uh, later on. Now, the reality was that when God created man, and after God created man, so in chapter 2, God now formed man as a person. Of course, I don't know if it was on this, it was one of my preachings like this or during one of the Bible studies that I explained to us that man is a tripartite being. Man has the spirit, the soul, and the body. The spirit, the soul, and the body. So there is no spirit. And from today, I'm telling you, don't let anybody deceive you. There is no spirit that can access the territory of man without having a body that's why even you will see the evil spirit whenever they want to carry out any operation they enter into people to carry out their operation so it's not every time that you see somebody in your dream that wants to kill you it might not be that person <laughs> of, of, of uh, for, for real it might just be the evil spirit that is possessing that person because no spirit can have any access in this territory no spirit anybody that will have access here must have this body and that's why man was not evident in Genesis chapter 1. Because man was just a spirit at that time. It was until Genesis chapter 2 that God formed the body of man. That man now became a living being here on earth. So in Genesis chapter 3, we notice something that happened. Now, when the Bible recorded that God called out to Adam, and say, Adam, where are thou? And Adam said something. He said, I heard your voice walking in the garden, and I hid myself. Now, that suggests something to me. That means that Adam, Eve, and God, they have always been in fellowship. There is a kind of relationship that existed between them. And that is why Adam was able to recognize the voice of God, even without seeing God. Now, 
Adam was able to recognize what? The voice of God, even without seeing him. Just like some of us here now know me very well. If you hear my voice or heard my voice anywhere, you'll be able to tell and say, oh, Pastor Samuel is speaking or Pastor Samuel is around. The reason is because you have a level of relationship with me to the extent that you can recognize my voice when I speak. And that suggests to me that there has been a form of fellowship with, between God and man from the beginning. So that is the intention of God. One of the intentions of God is that man and God will be able to relate together. Why? Don't forget I told you. God is a spirit. And the first existence of man that God brought to life is the spirit of man, the man spirit. So there is a form of relationship between God and man. So what happened was that after man fell, God cursed the man. You will notice in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 that everything that God was saying about man is blessing, 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 blessing. But look at, let's look at the book of that book of Genesis chapter 3 now. I want us to read this one now. Genesis chapter 3. Um, let's look at, I think towards the end of the last verses. Okay, look at verse 30. No, before verse 30. Let's look at verse, verse 17. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it, cause is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both tongues and tissues it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In, this, in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Now, this return to the ground is talking about the physical body of man. Now, spirits do not die. I want you to take note of this this morning. Spirits do not die. Spirit can never die. Spirit lives eternal. So now, two things happened after the fall of man. There was a natural death that was pronounced. And that's why you see that after God said, dust you came from and dust you shall return. That's why you notice that Adam did not die immediately. Adam didn't die immediately. There was two kinds of death that was pronounced immediately at that fall of man. Now, the first death is severity. It's like a cutting away. Don't forget that man and God, they have relationship together before. They are both spirit beings. The difference between God and man is that man has a body here on earth through which he can operate here on earth. Hallelujah. And when the Bible is talking about the image of God, the Bible is talking about the image of God in terms of spirit. In terms of spirit. So don't let anybody think as I am like this, like this my body here is the image of God. No, that's not what the Bible is referring to. Whenever we say that you are the image of God, the Bible is talking about your spirit man. It is your spirit man that is the image of God, not this physical body. God does not have this physical body. God doesn't, he does not need this physical body. I hope you are getting what I'm saying this morning. So whenever the Bible talks about the image of God, God is talking about your spirit. Now, so at the fall of man, what exactly happened was that there was a severity. There was a cutting away from that life of God. So God did two things when man fell. The first one, the two came in the form of pronunciation of death, pronouncement of death. That's how the two came. But one of the two of them, the first one is what? Death from the life of God. That means before man could access God, man could reach out to God as any time he wanted to. So there was a cutting away from that life. And the second one is the physical death, which man was not supposed to experience in the first place. But because of what man did, because of disobedience, God had to cut man away from his life, which is the spirit of God, which is the fellowship with God, with the Father. And then the second pronouncement was that man will die. And that was the second pronouncement. Praise God. So there was a fellowship, there was a relationship between man and God. That was why Adam was able to recognize the voice of God. It means that God had always been coming down at the cool of the day, as Bible recorded. At the cool of the day, God will always come down to fellowship with man. 
in verse 8 to 10 of Genesis chapter 3. And that's why Adam was able to recognize the voice of God. And after that pronouncement, like I said, we can, let's check the book, of, the book of Romans. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. If anybody is there before me, you can help me to read. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. If you are there before me, you can read to save our time. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Okay. Romans 5, verse 12. Yes, please. And that sin came into the world through one man, and his sin brought death with it. As a result, death has spread to the whole human race because everyone has sinned. Praise God. So, what this is simply telling us is that everyone in the world, through the sin of Adam and the death pronounced on him. Don't forget, I've explained the death as not just death, like somebody just dying. It's in twofold. There is the spiritual death and there is a natural death that came as a result of Adam's sin, as a result of Adam's disobedience. And because of that, through Adam, because that is the first man that was created and we all came from Adam, naturally. By default, we all came from Adam. And because of that, all men walking on the surface of, of the earth are dead. They received that death directly from Abraham. Ere, er, is, will I say er, by hered, hered, uh, hereditary or something, heredity or something like that? Everybody received that death from Adam naturally. They received the severity away from God. So that means as a man, you don't have any business naturally with the life of God. You cannot access the spirit of God. You cannot access the fellowship of God again by the reason of Adam's sin. Now, let's look at verse 6 of that same Romans chapter 12. Look at it. The Bible says, For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For when we were still without strength, uh, they, I, I, I like to read from the Amplified Version. I don't know if anybody has Amplified Version to help me read. Does anybody have Amplified Version? Now, Amplified Version said, I, I'll try to tell us what it says. Amplified Version says, when we were powerless, trying to achieve, trying to work out our own salvation, when we were powerless, trying to work out our own salvation, we were trying to work out our own salvation. So what happened is that after man fell, man has always been trying to meet up with God. Man has always been trying to, to meet up with the standard of God again, to enter back into that fellowship. Man kept doing it on his own, but man did not have that cap cap capacity, that ability to be able to enter that life again. And that's why Christ came to die for us and to offer that life for us praise god that's why christ came to offer that life for us i want us to quickly open the book of colossians chapter 1 verse 19 colossians chapter 1 verse 19 this will even make it clearer to us colossians 1 19 now the bible says for it pleased the father that in him all the fullness should dwell and by him reconcile all things to himself by him whether things on earth or things in heaven having made peace through the blood of his cross verse 21 and you who were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you only and blameless and above reproach in his sight now, this Bible is telling us, because of what Adam did, we became severe. We became far away from God. God cut us away from him. We could no longer access God again. And so when Christ came now, that is what Christ, the death of Christ did for us. The death of Christ brought us back into that relationship with God. The death of God brought us back. And this is some of the things that some people in some other religion... And by the way, I've always said it, Christianity is not a religion. 
It is rather a relationship, a way of life, a relationship between man and God. That's what Christianity is. As a matter of fact, I think the Bible even described or defined religion. The Bible said, good religion is when you visit the fatherless and the poor people and you reach out to them. The Bible did not say religion is a way of reaching to God. No, that's not what the Bible says. So Christianity is not a religion. It is rather a relationship. It is rather a relationship between man and God as it was in the beginning. So after the severity of man, after the death of man, God sent Jesus Christ to die for humanity. God sent Jesus Christ to die for our sins. God sent Jesus Christ to bring us back into that relationship with God. Now, Jesus is the giver of life. Jesus is the restorer of life. The Bible said this. The Bible confirmed this. In the book of John chapter 5 verse 26. John 5 26. The Bible says, As the Father has life in himself, he has also granted the Son to have life in himself. And as you know, in the book of John chapter 1 verse 4, the book of John chapter 1 verse 4, the Bible says, in him was life, and his life is the light of men. In him was life, and his life was the life of men. I want us to read the book of John chapter 10. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. I'm going to read from verse 17 to verse 18. I'll quickly read here. John chapter 10 from verse 17. To verse 18. Now the Bible says, Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my father. Jesus has life in, his, in himself, he has the ability to give life. He has the ability to take life. And that's why the book of John chapter 10 verse 10 says, The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He said, But I have come that you may have life and to have it abundantly. So the reason Christ came is that we have life. Which life? The life that we were cut away from, from the beginning. That is what Christ came to restore back to us. Don't forget, I said, what happened in the beginning was that there was a cutting away. That is to tell us this morning that we are restored back to that relationship with God. We are restored back to that life of God. We can approach God. I'm not going to lie to you this morning because I'm a pastor. You don't need any pastor to reach out to God. And I keep wondering where people get their messages of preaching about using the scriptures to tell you how to make money. That's why we have the business schools. If you want to learn business, you go to business school. If you want to learn any trade, you go to any trade school to learn it. The Bible is all about Jesus, all about the kingdom of God, all about our relationship with Jesus. You don't need any pastor. You don't need any bishop. You are being saved by Jesus. And you have that access to fellowship with God by yourself. You don't need anybody thinking, oh, I have to go and see one pastor before I travel. I have to go and see one pastor and to lay his hands on me or something like that. You can approach God by yourself. You can go to God by yourself. Christ saved you. He didn't save you so that you become slave to another man. God didn't save you so that you become slave to another pastor. He didn't save you so that you become slave to anybody. He restored life back to you. He didn't give you life so that you can so that you can you can go and become, you know, a boy or a girl to any other person. Nobody can dictate your life. Nobody should dictate your life because nobody gave you life. The only person that can dictate your life is Jesus. He gave you life. Jesus gave you life. Nobody can dictate your life. Jesus gave you life. Hallelujah. Jesus gave you life. 
You didn't work for it. And this is another issue that people in other religion, in other part of the world or whatever, that don't believe in Christ. This is the challenge they are having. They feel that you have to. I've heard some people say, I've heard some people say that um, if you want to come back in the next world, you have to behave well. Otherwise, you'll come as goats or you'll come as an animal. I've heard people say different kind of things. There is nothing like that. Some people try to work out, you know, like try to be good. They say, today I'm not going to do anything bad. Today I'm not going to do this. It is not by that. Your salvation is as a result of God's love. Your salvation is as a result of God's choice. It's love for you. That's why he came to die for you. That's why he saved you by grace, not by works. It's not by trying to live good. It's not by trying to be a good person. It's not by trying to be a kind person. It's not by trying to live and say, no, today I will not sin. Today I will not do this. It is not by that. God freely gave you this life. He freely restored you back to the life of fellowship with God. Hallelujah. I want us to quickly look at the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to read from verse 8 and verse 9. Ephesians 2 8. Look at this. The Bible says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. It's not by yourself. Verse 9 says, Not of works, lest, lest any man should boast. And can I tell you something this morning? I am not righteous than you are. <laughs> oh, that's so interesting. Don't say, oh, because he's a pastor, he's more righteous than me. No. Nobody is righteous than another person. Do you know why? We are the righteousness of God. Why? Because Christ is in us. Though the righteousness that we use is that of Jesus Christ. So, don't, don't see yourself as if you are a lesser Christian. You are not a lesser Christian. You are not a lesser Christian. The Bible says, for ye are saved by grace, not by works. So don't think I am saved because I'm a pastor, because I preach. That is not true. That is not true. God loves the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It's not because the world did anything. It's not because you and I did anything. It's not because of that. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. Imagine, if it is by works now, then I'll be saying, I'll be bragging and say, oh, because I preach, or because I sing gospel music, that's why I'm saved. No, that is not true. You are not a lesser Christian to anybody. So don't let anybody deceive you by their titles or by whatever. No, don't allow anybody to deceive you. All you need to do, what matters, is the life that God has returned you to, the relationship that God has restored back to you, the relationship between you and God, the relationship between you and Jesus. We, the pastors, we are there to guide, to, to teach you more about the word of God, to let you know how you can take your relationship deeper and higher with God. We are not your gods. A pastor is not your God. Praise God. Let's, let's go back to Romans. Romans chapter 5 verse 9. I want to read something to us. In Romans chapter 5 verse 9. Romans chapter 5 verse 9. Look at this. The Bible says, Much more dead, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Having now been justified by his blood, you are forever justified by God. You are forever restored back into the life of God. Restored back into the life of God. You are restored back into the life of God. Let's, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22. The Bible says, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ 
all shall be made alive. You are alive again. You are made alive through Christ. You are not made alive through a man of God. You are not made alive by somebody trying to condemn you. You are not made alive by somebody trying to tell you how to live your life. You are made alive by God through Christ. You are made alive by God through Christ. Now, you know we read the book of Ephesians uh, chapter 2 from verse 8. I want us to quickly, let's step back a little bit. Let's read out Ephesians from verse 4. Let's see what the Bible says. Let's read out Ephesians 2 from verse 4. Look at, look at what the Bible says. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love, which he loved us, with which he loved us, verse 5, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. Look at verse 6. And raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, that in ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Where are you seated this morning? You are seated high in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's where you are. The same place where you think the most holy person is, that is the same place where you are. That's why I'm telling you that you are not a lesser Christian to anybody. Why? Jesus did it for you. Jesus gave you his life. Jesus restored you back to that relationship, to that fellowship that was in the beginning with God. He restored you back. Hallelujah. God is wonderful. We thank God for his mercy. We thank God for his grace. 